In addition to transforming voltages and currents, transformers were frequently used to match impedances of a load to that of the um, a source driving the load. To understand that, um, I have here a voltage source driving some load Z sub L, Z sub L, and of course the impedance Z is equal to the ratio of the voltage divided by the current. So the voltage across the impedance divided by the current going into the um, impedance. Now for some reason we wanted to change the impedance that the source saw. In other words, we'll call that Z in such that Z in is equal to V1 divided by I1, the ratio of the voltage to the current. If for some reason we wanted to, to change the impedance that the source saw, we can insert between the source and the load a transistor with a turns ratio of N1 to N2. And to understand what's happening here, let's go ahead and remind ourselves of the voltage and current relationships of the primary and secondary windings. In fact, we have for the voltage, we have V1 over V2 is equal to N1 over N2. Or we can then say that V1, solving for V1, we have V1 is equal to N1 over N2 times V2. And similarly, we have the current relationship I2 over I1 is equal to um, N1 over N2. Or solving this for I1 then, we have I1 is equal to I2 times N2 over N1. So, we now want to form, given these, we want to form the ratio of I1 to V1 for this circuit where the transformer has been inserted between the source and the load. So forming this, the uh, ratio V1 over I1, that is that Z in now, becomes V1 over I1 is equal to, well, V1 is N1 over N2 times V2 divided by I1, which is um, N2 over N1 times I1, which then is equal to just taking the N2 over N1, inverting and multiplying, we then get N1 over N2 quantity squared times V2 over, oops, let's see, this should be, did this wrong, this should be I2 here. I1, which is what we're replacing this I1 here with the expression for I1. I1 is I2 over N2 over N1. So with that correction then, we get still multiplying by the inverse of this gives us the N1 over N2 squared in the numerator and we're left with V2 over I2. But we see here that V2 over I2 is just Z sub L. So we get then that the input impedance seen by the, tran or seen by the source is equal to N1 over N2 quantity squared times the load impedance. So up here, without the transformer, the source saw the load impedance Z sub L. By inserting the transformer, the source sees as Z in, it sees not Z sub L, but Z sub L multiplied by the ratio of the turns in the primary divided by the turns in the secondary squared. So what this is telling us is that if the source impedance and the load impedance are not matched, for example, in maximum power transfer, we know that you want Z sub L, the magnitude of Z sub L, to be the same as the magnitude of the source impedance. We can change the effective impedance that the source sees by inserting this transformer, and the, source that it, or the impedance that it then sees is the load impedance multiplied by the turns ratio squared. We can get a little bit of an intuitive feel for what's happening here by considering, first of all, this source without the matching transformer. Again, the impedance is just V1 over I1. Now, we insert this ideal transformer. And let's just assume that, um, let's just assume that the uh, turns ratio is such that the number of turns on the primary is greater than the number of turns on the secondary. 
What that would mean in is that V1 will be greater than V2, and the current I1 will be less than the current I2. Thus, the input impedance seen by the source is going to be greater both because the voltage here across the primary is going to be greater and it's, the input impedance is going to be greater because the input current is going to be less than it is at the secondary and that increased voltage and, in, and decreased current is both related to this N1 over N2 so the effect of the turns ratio is squared.